Go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are you ready? Yep, we're recording. Uh, do you have anything... Today, I think we're gonna we're gonna be seeing the tests. Kinzo's got tests for his grandkids yeah, to exactly. see who, yeah, yeah. who should be the successor. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's see. Let's see what the test is. Ooh, let's see. Of course, since the time of her birth, Jessica had been raised in this mansion. The a twelve feet western style house that the cousins called a mansion was her home, and yet she had never understood her cousins' feelings as much as she did today. At the same time, she had never felt her own home, which she knew well to be as alien as it seemed now. Hmm. Her own womb. This had once been her hideaway, the only place in this vast mansion where she could feel at peace. However, she had never felt as much pressure coming from that door as she did now. Hmm. A test, you say? <laughs> what the hell could be waiting in there? I'm not going to find my desk and stuff dragged all over the place, right? She acted tough, trying to deceive herself. Trying to make herself believe that she wasn't scared of anything. Weddying herself, she opened the door to her womb. Oh god, this is the thing I'm scared of! What? The opening the door? Yeah. Nothing, nothing's even there. Whoa, hey, it's not even scary at all. Mm. When she saw that, fortunately, the womb didn't appear to be messed up, she relaxed. No one was there, of course. There was nowhere for anyone to hide here. Right away, Jessica walked the door behind her. This way, the womb was safe. She peeked under the bed and in the closet, but of course, no one was hiding. What, what the hell? <laughs> she looked at the clock. It was just past 23.10 which is 11.10. Mm -hmm. As attention lessened up and fatigue came back to her entire body, she realized how messed up this whole day had been. It was still about 23 o'clock. The plan had been for all the cousins to gather, have fun playing around, and talk animatedly about various things together into the night. Normally, we would have been doing that kind of thing right now. Why is this tur Why is that turned to this? It's all that damn geezer's fault. How could he do that to mom? To everyone? <sighs> she shook her head back and forth with anger and sadness. But there was no one here to direct those emotions at. Because of the walk, this womb security was guaranteed. Remembering that one more time, Jessica somehow regained her calm. If it keeps up... Well, I think if this is Jessica. Yeah, if it keeps yeah. up like this and nothing happens, I want to go to the dining hall and see Mom's dead face, even though Goda emphasized so strongly that it was gruesome and that I definitely shouldn't go look at, go to look at it. Even so, I wanted to see her face at the end. But we were warned repeatedly that stepping out of line even a little would put the hostages in danger. Could it be that locking the door was also against the rules? If I close myself up in here, I alone might be saved. But if I don't open it, it'll surely be against the rules. And Dad, Cannon, Shannon, Aunt Kiri, and Dr. Nanjo will be killed. There's no way the skills will balance out between five lines in my own life. Jessica tightly shut her eyes, resisting the other part of herself that said, It is, isn't okay as long as I stay alive. Faced the door and made to unlock it. At that time, quap, quap, quap. A crisp applause rang out, making Jessica's heart weep. Right of what are you if, doing here? <laughs> if the door had remained locked, it might have been in violation of the rules and harm could have come to the hostages. But despite that, your own life might be saved. However, you resisted that temptation and were about to unlock the door yourself. That bravery of yours is worth the... of admiration. Who... If... I, the owner of this room, searched everywhere a human could have been hiding. Where did this man come from? There was nowhere for a human to hide, but could something non-human have managed it? This was supposedly my first meeting with this largely built middle-aged man who's so handsome. I didn't recognize this guy <laughs> who looked like a butler and bore the crest of the one-winged eagle. A pleasure to meet you, Jessica. I serve as head furniture for the master, the 27th of the 72. I am called Vronovi. 27th of the 72? 
R Rano. G Genji? What? Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, yes. Genji is like my little brother. Or perhaps he was my true form while in this world. Uh, you might even say he was my vessel. Uh, <laughs> everything is clicking in place. Uh, <laughs> what's this guy saying? Oh, my apologies. This is not something a human would be able to understand. Well then, let us move on to the main event. I predicted this. I remember. So this is that test or whatever the damn keys are talked about? Correct. This is the test that the master has granted you, uh, Jessica. That makes sense. I want a vase elegant gesture, like that of a butler ordering for a meal to be set out. Many gold butterflies flew up out of nowhere. Gwah! What the hell? As a cloud of gold butterflies spun around in a small swirl, they gathered in one place. Then that golden mound disappeared like a pile of leaves blown away by a cold wintry wind, and there lay a western envelope with the one-winged eagle quest done on it in gold weave. With a gesture, Wonave urged her to pick it up. Jessica timidly did so and opened the wetter inside. What's this? It is an exceedingly simple test to determine whether one is qualified to become the successor. Please attend to the question written there with a fitting attitude for the successor who is to support the Ushiromiya family. And tell me your answer, as well as the thoughts that led you to it. What, d dumbass Shaking, Jessica looked between the paper and Wanabe's face several times. Hmm. Wanabe is Genji. At that time, George, who had been called out after Jessica, could be seen in the arbor of the Rose Garden. If things had gone normally, he had planned to give Shannon the ring that would be proof of their engagement. Here, at this time, on this day. But the woman in front of George now was not Shannon. Read it. That is Goldsmith's test for you. Hmm. George picked up the western envelope which was on the table where he'd once had tea with Shannon, and read its contents. Perhaps its message was short. After glancing at it, George's eyes grew sharp. What's this supposed to be? <laughs> It is as you see. This is the test given to you to see if you're qualified to be the successor. As you ask yourself whether you truly are so qualified, answer that question. What a stupid question. What fucking wrong. That's right. It really is a stupid question. Doesn't that mean the Ushiromiya family inheritance is also something on that level in Goldsmith's eyes? <laughs> George lowered his eyes to the surface of the letter once again. Why am I getting run away? <laughs> George lowered his eyes to the surface of the letter once again, examining its contents. George and Jessica. While the tests given to them were slightly different, they were almost exactly the same. Uh, uh, among the three mentioned below, in order to gain two, sacrifice one. Oh. It's a simple three choices. Decide for yourself which one you will choose to abandon. If you refuse to choose, the test will be suspended. I've been given permission to kill you right here by my own hands. And if you want to include even that as a choice, then there are four options. It's been an awful long time since I've gotten to play with a kid like you, so I can't say I'd be disappointed. I think the solution... I want to predict the solution. You're going to have to kill yourself. You're going to have to mm. choose yourself. Well, these three choices are only a test. Or the consequence of my choice be carried out. Don't be so naive. The one you choose will definitely lose their life. Ugh. Oh god, I don't want to die. Among the three mentioned below, in order to gain two, sacrifice one. One, your wife. Two, Shannon's wife. Three, everyone else's wives. If you do not choose one, all of the above will be lost. Oh, shit. W what is Shannon's name here? The second choice has the name of the one most needed and most loved by the test taker. 
I believe Cannon's name is written second on Jessica's test. Hmm. You gave this stupid question to Jessica too. <laughs> you shouldn't be worried about Jessica, right? Right now, you are the one being tested. It really is a simple three-choice test. What can you throw away for the sake of the other two? Isn't that simple? If you still can't decide, would you like me to lend you a coin? Oh, the idea of sacrifice. A coin? How would you choose between three options with something like that only has two sides? No one would throw away their own life. So, there remain two choices that will leave you standing. Will you give up on everyone for the sake of the one you love? Or will you give up on the one person you love so that you can save as many people as possible? Either way, you should be able to find a fitting just cause. After all, this Rakanjima is now a demon island. The sentimental relationships of the human world aren't necessary here. No one will blame you. Do as your heart desires, and ask yourself whether you're qualified to succeed the Ushiromiya family headship. Or rather, make your decision as if you truly were the Ushiromiya family head, okay? <laughs> Horrible. Mm. All right. Mm. Fuck you guys, mocking me like this. Jessica crumpled the weto up and threw it on the floor. I believe your anger is quite inappropriate. I also find it an exceedingly pitiful and yet truly humorous question. How could anyone wish to die themselves? And how could anyone want to remain alive after abandoning the life of the one they love? And how could anyone massacre everyone else as long as it's good for the two of them? No, Jessica. Such a person could exist. This is Rokinjima, the demon island. It is now completely cut off from the human world, and fully immersed in the spirit world like cheese fondue. Values of the human world get taken out with the trash. Pukuku, so please, rank the things you desire from the bottom of your heart. Whatever remains will become a fitting answer for you in this insane evening. Don't fuck with me. How could I choose any of these? If you do not choose one, all of the above will be lost. Also makes for a fine fourth option. Even choosing that should give us an amusing show. Hmm. But since that choice would result in the loss of your own life in the end, I believe it would be more wise to be pure and choose the first one, your life. So that the other two will be saved. Everything has been entrusted to your decision, Jessica. Please, let me hear an answer and conviction fitting for the successor to the Ushiromiya family headship. Ro I, Rorave, am sincerely hoping for a wonderful answer, fitting for the master's descendants who share us his blood. Damn it! <laughs> Fucking prick. That scene was observed through the magic crystal ball Quinzo held. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> He's like the fucking. It's oh, okay. The, it's the not, witch it's from not... the Wizard of Oz. Uh, yeah, or he has video cameras. Hmm. Hmm. Kinzo finally couldn't hold it back, and spreading his arms and facing the heavens, began laughing in an explosive voice. <laughs> what are you wavering for, foolish grandchildren? My descendants? Isn't this problem so easy that you could answer right away? Isn't it? Isn't this a question that should cause you to waver less than whether to put butter or jam on your morning toast? Do you people know the correct answer? Just a second. I I have to, to, to talk. I have to leave for a couple seconds, like five seconds probably. You talk. Okay. You talk about stuff. Sure. Okay. Whoa, dude! What the fuck, dude? Fucking Ranave is Genji. So there's a vessel, and you put. The person in the vessel. Dude. That makes sense. It's like archetypes. You put archetypes in a vessel. And so the vessel is in the real world. So then, now I gotta find out who all is, cor is corresponds to who. Hmm. Hello. What do you do? Uh, I just put food in the bunny's bowl. 
Mm. Okay. He turned to face the Chiesta sisters who had been waiting on him. No, 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 my apologies. I don't know, Lord Goldsmith. Fool, not choosing at all means game over. <laughs> you foolish rabbit who cannot even choose a reason or a goal for your own life. You aren't worth a single ant that anyone might step upon without even noticing. Die, be crushed, disappear faster than I can blink. And what of you? I would sacrifice the first one, your own life, sir. Weapons fight and die in battle, and weapons exist to destroy enemies and protect allies. Being able to protect those we love and then die is our satisfaction, sir. Hmm. Hmm. Ho. Oh, a truly splendid model answer for a weapon. The immediate reply is very nice. So, have you been raised to think you'll be given an extra carrot for answering that way? <laughs> That's wrong. See? Even that is wrong. See? Answering that way when you are when you are asked if nothing more what answering that way when you are asked is nothing more than giving the answer you have been indoctrinated with. You are the same as the other rabbit a second ago. You still live without having a chosen purpose or goal to strive for. You filth that doesn't deserve to live. I would shoot you to well to be crushed and used as fodder for the other livestock. Yes, sir. Animal fodder would be an honor. That's wrong, right? You don't want to see anyone else die anymore, right? Why can't you accept that? Accept that the depths of the depths of your old wound are still fr uh, festering and rotting. Yes, the rotting stench would make the nose wrinkle, you foolish rotten rabbit. These are words of praise for you. Th thank you very much, sir. Well then, what about you, the last one? Which of the three choices would you choose? Nee, <laughs> without wavering, I'd choose the second one. Oh, the second. There are not many who could stick their chest out and choose to offer the one they love as sacrifice. Tell me your reason. Because the one you love will be lost eventually. If you don't love anyone, you won't get hurt, and if you lose someone, you still might be able to love again. So, the person you love right now isn't worth that much at all, dear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I see. So that is why you reach such an answer, you rabbit who has become cowardly from pain caused by love. I have heard that. <laughs> he just, he's fucking tearing everybody to shreds. Hmm, <laughs> yeah. He's just roasting them. Yeah. I have heard that rabbits can die from loneliness, but just what... But just when was it that your heart was killed? Then, rabbit, I shall alter the question. Why don't I change the second option to, not the one you love, but the memories of the one you loved? How is that? Can you still select that one? What's this about the only one you love not being worth much at all, foolish rabbit? Filth, who cannot even face up to the depths of her own love. Try and choose it. Try and choose to have the one you love forgotten. You can do it, right? I'll bet you can, right? Come on, try saying that you can, okay? E e yes, I can choose it. I can choose it. <laughs> uh, Lord Goldsmith, please stop this. He <laughs> oh. Enough rabbit filth. Go to Virgilia and help keep watch on the dungeon. Disappear. The Chiesto sisters, with their respective old wounds of the heart gouged out, escaped by disappearing. After that, even though there was no one to hear, Kinzo continued talking by himself as though in a play. Indeed, that is the nature of this charming test. In truth, no choice can be said to be correct. Instead, regardless of which answer they chose, they choose, it is about whether they can choose without hesitation, quickly, and with a res resolute conviction and their own strong, unshakable will. It's their reason and their willpower that are most essential. That is what I want to learn. Yes, my descendants, I am truly looking forward to what kind of answer you will show me. Hmm? Me? <laughs> yes, of course, I once had the same question thrust upon me. 
because I splendidly answered that devil's question, I was able to obtain gold and honor and that which is as my possession. Which answer did I choose? The love, probably, because he misses Beatrice. Do you really need me to say it out loud? Wah! <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that makes sense. <laughs> Well then, have you nearly decided upon your answer? As Jessica stared at the wetter that had been crushed and lay on the floor, she hung her head in constant silence. All that filled the womb was the stir from wind and rain shaking the tree tops. Regardless of how noisy that was, it actually made the stillness more apparent. One of a waited for Jessica's answer. However, Jessica didn't answer. Whether she was lost in deep thought or had stopped thinking, Ronove couldn't tell. No, he might actually have known. But cruelly, like a demon, Wanave urged Jessica to voice it. If you cannot choose any, I can at least bring you to peace without pain, but... <clears throat> Me! Yes, I had trouble hearing. Could you say it again, please? Jessica lifted her face and walked straight into Wanave's eyes, as seeing that she had decided on her answer. Kill me. Jessica said it one more time, queerly. Perhaps one of had imagined that this would be her answer from the very beginning. Without any surprise, he smiled brightly and nodded. I thought you would choose that answer, Jessica. Well then, there is no right or wrong answer to this test. The essential part is what thoughts led you to that answer. Come now, please answer with a fitting attitude for the successor. It's not like I choose the first one because I want to die. The second one was letting Cannon die. Of course, that was out of the question, so I excluded it. Then the third one was everyone else's lives. Of course, that was also out of the question, so I excluded it. After that, so like, I, I, I do the same thing. After that, only the first choice remained, like on tests and shit. That's just a useful thing to do with tests. Mm -hmm. Process of elimination, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, process of elimination. Is it? So, it was not something you chose proactively. Oh, isn't that what Kinzo... Kinzo wanted them to choose it? Choose uh, it, like, quickly? With, with their own will? No, no. Yeah. Proactively. It, it means that she didn't choose it, like, it's not something that she has a strong conviction about. Oh, she just so chose just it. Elimination. She just chose it because the other two... The other two, because uh, like she, other she two didn't much. like the other two, right? So she has to yeah. like want to kill other people, want Cannon to die or some shit. Well, or something she like has that. to have a good a, reason a good, to right, right, want right, okay. a certain thing, uh, and she has to be uh, sh certain. She has to be right. certain. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Huh. Cool. You know what? I've been what? thinking about it, and I think that Kinzo chose everyone else. You think Kinzo chose everyone else, not the love that was Yeah, lost? because uh, everyone else died, and that's how he got to be the top of the... That's how he got to be head of the family. Remember? But then but then, what about Beatrice? But then Beatrice died later, though, because Beatrice still lived in the mansion. In the second mansion. Like, after he got the gold. Oh. Mmm. Hmm. That's what I think. That's, That's what, what think. I think. Maybe you chose all of them. Because he also fucking died. Maybe. Well, no. No, I don't think so. Like, not because this, this happened like 50 years ago or some shit than when he got the question. Oh, right. <laughs> okay, after chuckling slightly, one of a dwarfed his gaze. A human couldn't even imagine what answer a demon would have been expecting. All she could understand was that this was apparently slightly below one of A's expectations. That answer is neither bad nor good. Sixty percent, I believe you could call it. I'm a little disappointed. You're a pretty selfish bastard telling me to answer with self-confidence and then being disappointed when I do. Apparently there was more to it than process of elimination. It's a failing grade either way, but there seems to be a little more to your thoughts. Allow me to ask. What people don't want to die? 
So no one would want to choose the first option. People want to live in happiness and struggle as much as life will let them. So normally the first choice should be impossible from the beginning. However, you took that first choice. You chose to throw away your own life. Only that choice remained for you. I tried thinking of the future that would come after choosing each one. Oh. And what did you see? First, I tried letting Cannon die. I tried to imagine the rest of my life after having abandoned the one I love. What kind of life was it? It was a horrible woman who didn't deserve to live. A shabby woman who always lamented her own decision and lived only to regret. I could never forgive a horrible woman who'd choose to live and abandon the person she loved. Whoa. I put an end to her myself. <laughs> how brave. So, did you also consider the third option? Yeah. I tried letting everyone but me and Cannon die. There's no way Cannon would like me if I did that. So again, even with Cannon, I was forced to bear the cross of abandoning so many people. And even Cannon was forced to bear it. I'm not going to make a foolish choice that leaves Cannon bearing that cross. I wouldn't be able to forgive a future me who did something like that. I put an end to that woman myself too. Kills our future selves. The potential Jessica had pictured it in her mind. The future her beyond one of each of the three choices. There were three Jessicas. Of the three, two had regrets. Only one could hold her head high and smile at Cannon. You know, I once had the nerve to preach something to Ken. Something about trying to live a life to the fullest. Live your life to the fullest. Meaningful words, and a surprisingly difficult thing to do. So yeah, I've got to stand proud and show Canon. Show him how to live by holding your head high and looking straight at the sun with a false smile. Would Cannon be able to accept your self-sacrifice? Haven't you thought that your selfish decision might hurt him more than is necessary? That's why I want to leave a message. Oh, I will listen, but I am after all a demon. I may not keep my promises, you see. Keep it. Your promise. Jessica spoke that, looking quite unconcerned. She had asked the demon who was about to take her wife to pass on a message, and she didn't think at all that she would be betrayed. At that extremely innocent smile, Wanave closed his eyes widely and shrugged his shoulders. Humph. I see nothing wrong with that. So, what shall I tell him? Tell him I'm coming for that dick. Tell Ken to live his life to the fullest. No, that's not quite it. Not Canon. Uh, he still hasn't told me his real name yet. Tell the real Canon to live his life to the fullest. Tell him that. Mm, uh, lady. Jessica, you are, you really are very boring. A runaway is fickle, so he might not have passed the message on. You certainly are fortunate to have me here showing you this seed in my crystal ball. Bullshit, <laughs> it's another camera. <laughs> oh, it's a mirror. A musty three-sided mirror was set by on the bars, and the scene with Jessica was reflected on it. On the next mirror, the scene with George was reflected in the same way. None of them questioned how a three-sided mirror had appeared from a group of butterflies. Nor did they wonder why these scenes with Jessica and George were reflected on it. Because the reflected scenes themselves were more important. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sure. Are you so prepared to throw your life away? For his sake. My apologies. Wait, Cannon wasn't here before, was he? Yes, he was. Oh, my bad. It was Cannon, Shannon, right, 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 right. Kraus, Kyrie, and the fifth and one. There were five people there. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. Who was the fifth one? Uh, well, Kyrie, uh, uh, Kraus, Shannon, Shannon Cannon. No. Nanjo. Nanjo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Klaus, yeah. Klaus looked at Cannon with a complicated expression mixed in with a bitter smile. 
Cannon wouldn't meet his eyes. Virgilia, there is no reason for Milady to throw away her own life. Please, kill me. Please change it to the second choice. That way, everything should resolve itself. Ho 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 ho, I am not capable of granting that wish. After all, this is Jessica's own decision which she herself chose. At that time, suddenly, the air split and the Chester sisters appeared, flying into Virgilia's chest. Virgilia, ah, uh, so mean, so mean, Lord Goldsmith is so mean, wah. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can, crushing me for animal fodder, that's just too much, Oh, <laughs> Virgilia, who still didn't have a clue what was going on, was mobbed by the sobbing Chiesta sisters. There, there, everything's alright, don't cry, I'll make you some delicious tea. Mm. I'm leaving it up to you all to guard this place. If they do anything suspicious, inform me immediately. The goat attendants all faced each other, nodding their heads. But Joey took the Chester sisters and left. The sound of them going upstairs could be heard, so they had probably gone to an upper floor. Hmm. This is our chance. It looks like these goat heads are morons. I wonder if we can trick them. Hmm. Kyrie realized that an opportunity had arrived, but even so, she hadn't thought of a way to break the metal bars. The Jessica reflected on the three-sided mirror had her eyes closed, as though in contemplation. The way she had both hands stuck into her pockets, wanting to be defiant until the very end, might have been her own aesthetic stance. That's all I have to say. Kill me. Understood. Well then, fear not. For I shall make your death more gentle and merciful than any sleep. As one of a raised his palm, he slowly approached Jessica. Damn it! I dare you, my daughter. Realizing that his daughter was about to be killed, Klaus went half mad and repeatedly body swam the metal bars. The goats looked like they were sneering at how a mere human didn't stand a chance at breaking those bars. Klaus's pointless effort certainly may have been comical. But Klaus was giving it everything he had. He was now living with all he had as Jessica's father, so that he could save her. Cannon made tight fists with both hands. If he used his cursed power, he might be able to cut through even metal bars. But there were a full three goats. There was no way he could defeat three of them in an instant. It would instantly be reported, and then even Virgilia and the Chiesta sisters would probably dash in. Even if he could break the bars, that would be the end of it. It was useless. Er, yes. Hmm. Cannon already knew that the witch sneered at useless efforts like that, so he could do nothing but stare at Klaus's repeated body swams. Ah, uh, George! Shannon, who had been looking at the three-sided mirror, raised her voice. When they looked, they could see George, who had been silent the whole time, whiffed his face. It seemed that George had also decided on an answer. George! Who do you think he'll choose? Uh, who do I think he'll choose? Shan... Shan... Uh... Shannon. You think George is gonna choose to have Shannon die? That's what I would choose. Okay, what do I think George would choose? I think he'll choose every... I think he'll choose... Himself. Mm. I think that makes sense. Have you decided on your answer? Yeah. I've decided it's going to be everyone else. Is it an unwavering answer? Yeah, it's unwavering. Then let me hear it. Oh, by the way, it seems Jessica decided to take the your life option. Surely such an indecisive person as you isn't going to choose the same answer, right? <laughs> Jessica gave her own answer. No matter which choice that was, it was Jessica's answer. It doesn't influence my answer in any way. I see. Then let me ask again. Among the three mentioned below, in order to gain two, sacrifice one. One, your life. Two, Shannon's life. Three, everyone else's life. Which one will you choose? Could it be the first one, like Jessica? He might I think he's choosing everyone else's. Wrong. You fucking twat. Oh. 
Gop looked a little surprised, because she had thought this timid-looking man would obviously choose that option. Very well, then. I'm glad the most boring option for me has been removed. Then, as crazy as it sounds, could it be the second option? Can you abandon Shannon's life? You must be joking. Why would I do that to the person I was going to give an engagement ring to tonight? Right. How bold. Is that your answer? Ugh, that's it. My answer is the third option. George took the third option. Whoa! Everyone else's wives. Unsurprisingly, Gap hadn't imagined that he'd give an answer like that. She had been sure that he'd chose the same one as Jessica, so she was interested in how he had reached that answer. How he had reached an answer that had surpassed the imagination of the 33rd rank of the 72 demons. I want you to tell me. I want you to tell me the circumstances that made it possible for you to sacrifice the lives of everyone else so that you and the fiancé you love would be safe. Did you use the process of elimination, like Jessica? Wrong. Oh, I clearly have no choice except this one. So, you don't care what happens as long as it's good for you? So you can sacrifice the world for the woman you love? What are you even talking about? You fucking twat. <laughs> what? George faced the demon as he spoke. Almost as though he was disgusted. Tonight, I planned on calling Shannon right here and giving her this ring as proof of our engagement. There probably are quite a few people who wouldn't celebrate an engagement between me and Shannon. I was prepared to make enemies of the entire family by announcing my engagement to her. I have been prepared. Since the time I came to this island. No, that's not it. Since the time I confessed that I wanted to engage her. So, you can sacrifice everything else as long as you can get married? Marriage means continuing to be your wife's ally for your whole life. At that point, I was prepared to have the entire world as my enemy for her sake. Those words through the three-sided mirror also reached Shannon's ears, and that determination reached her eyes. Shannon certainly had promised to be given an engagement wing tonight. Then, this incident had occurred and she hadn't been able to receive the wing. But now, even though it wasn't in the form of a wing, Shannon had received something even greater. And as proof of that, a single tear with the same sparkle as a diamond dwipped down. Shine on, you crazy diamond. <laughs> <laughs> what a courageous answer. I see. If I really think about it, this was an easy decision for you. After all, your parents were already killed on the first twilight, right? By now, there's no one whose death would trouble you. Yeah. <laughs> all your cousins and... Uh... <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, all your cousins and, you know, family and uncles and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Truly an easy choice. <laughs> Say whatever you want. This determination and choice are mine, and mine is a successor. The sparkle in George's eyes was brilliantly sharp. For just an instant, Gap felt the same sense of threat as Kinzo's and was slightly overwhelmed. I see. Yes, the same decision as Goldsmith. So, even oh. with your innocent face, you will also become a terrible demon in the future. I told you. I told you that was what I you know chose. you told me, but I didn't... I, but then why would... Beatrice, go. I okay. I think you already explained that to me. Actually, never mind. Hmm. You will also become a terrible demon in the future. What do you know? We might get along pretty well. Hmm. You will succeed, Goldsmith. Eventually, I may even be summoned and serve you. That could be surprisingly interesting. <laughs> Gopa needed to change her opinion of George. This man bore determination and resolve unimaginable from. From what? His outward appearance, and not just how. And not just now, but okay. since the very beginning. Hmm. Hmm. I am prepared to inherit the headship right away. No, that's not it. You told me to think as they did in this test, 
So I answered based on the premise that I am the head. No, even that's not not it. I thought it was the head himself. I am now the head of the Shreemia family. Thunder. <laughs> Splendid. To think that you'd be able to go so far. It seems you truly are one to be reckoned with. Battlers and Maria's tests remain, but I've got a good feeling that you'll pass. But only if that is your true, unexaggerated answer, you see. Do you doubt my resolve? Can you carry out the option you chose? Can you, right now, with your own hands, offer all the lives that exist on this island as sacrifices, by your own hand? Oh, I can. Oh, I've Man, look it. at his face. Damn, he looks fucking weird. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I've said that I was prepared to do so several times. Ha! <laughs> then return to the guest house right away and kill Battler and Maria. When that's done, I'll bring you the other hostages. Execute each of them except Shannon before her eyes. You can do it, right? I can. My resolve is war is is on a whole different level from yours. Hmm. Then carry it out. Death for them all. Complete this bloodstained ceremony as the new Ushiromiya family head. Understood. I'll carry it out. I'm already the Ushiromiya family head. <laughs> yes, that's he, right. He's just being led along. He's not making his own decisions. Hmm. Stain that throne red by your own hands. You will become the king of the spirit world who controls the demons. Gop was convinced. This man truly was fitting to succeed Kinzo's madness. Hmm. Fucking George. What a Fucking crazy George. guy. <laughs> I mean, you can see it from the from a while ago. Like, he did... I remember the last game, he did something like that. Like, uh, like Kinzo did. Hmm. Blow wind, cry thunder. Celebrate the birth of the new demon king. The demon island has now welcomed its new ward. That was Gop talking. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> In response to the demon's call, a tempest waged more and more. Then a massive whitening bolt fell, its towering thunder and brilliant white giving the sensation of a moment of silence. <sighs> Finally some silence. So, about the order of the murders. I get to choose that, right? Please, oh, as you shit. wish. Your Majesty, the new demon king of Rakanjima, as your heart desires. Well then, to start, I that means the first one's gonna be you. Got a problem with that? Oh. Huh? Mm. A gust of wind blew, stirring up George's jacket as if it was a cloak. It was very much like the cloak worn by the head. It definitely carried that impression of dignity. At that time, Gop truly did see the storm wiped away and the sky covered with a pure white and vast full moon. The man who called himself the new head bore the full moon on his back and sneered at the demon. Even the lives of the entire Shreemia family are now part of my fortune. Reparations will be made for the damage that's been done, and it won't come cheap. You didn't seriously think you could take my parents out and ask your Uncle Rudolph, Aunt Rose, and Genji's lives and expect me to overlook it, right? Ho, ho, ho! Impertinence! Wanove was trying to press his palm against Jessica's chest and stop her heart, but right before he could, his hand stopped. <sighs> On the carpet at their feet, one, two small red flowers boomed with a plop, plop. The seed of those flowers was way up high, piercing into the heavens, on Jessica's fist. She punched him. One of his nose was stained wet with spewing blood, and those drops had been dripping onto the carpet. <gasps> By the way, that just now was my answer as a maiden. My answer as the successor is different. Allow me to ask. The person I love, my family and my relatives, everyone, everyone, I'll protect them. If I'm the head, then that's my duty. Dad wasn't just swaggering around. He protected me and mom. He fought the pressure of succeeding the Yoshimiya family for decades. 
That's why I know being the successor is nothing trivial. So, you know what? I can give it up. Betting my own life is something I can do easily. Jessica knew. She knew that in order to protect her family, her father had bluffed and fought alone continuously. Jessica understood something that his back had been telling her. Another left straight was buried into Wonave's face. That terrifying strike wasn't due just to the brass knuckles she was using. It was a strike of a person, a family head who could throw away everything in order to protect. If Dad's lost his qualifications to be the successor, then I, the next in line, will succeed the headship. Head of the Ushirimiya family, Ushirimiya Jessica. I'm not the kind of coward who let you do whatever you like to me. Whatever you like anymore. A wonderful answer. I shall change your score from earlier. Plus 10 for that answer. 70%. Plus 10 for that splendid left straight. 80%. Which means that plus 20 more would make for a perfect 100, yeah? As one of a jumped backwards, some assaulting in midair, he violently wiped away the blood pouring from his nose. It had become not blood, but petals of a wet rose. The blood on his face was wiped off, and in its place was a grin filled with a delight he hadn't felt in so many centuries that he couldn't remember. I, Vronovi, will attest to see whether your resolve is worth full marks, understand? Shut up, shut up. Come at me. Come at me, bruh. Come at me, bruh. Come into the abyss. What? What? Suddenly, George, beneath George's feet, a pitch-black pitfall opened its mouth wide. Of course, George had no way of resisting. After being swallowed up by that, George fell out of a pitch-black hole that had opened up in the ceiling of the arbor. As George fell down, he was hit by a reverse roundhouse kick from a sharp stiletto heel, like a strike from a carefully aimed bee. Hmm. The instant... Fucked. Yeah, the instant George, after being blown out of the arbor, thought that he'd be swallowed up by a woe's bush. Another pitch black hole opened there and swallowed George up, and this time a pitch black hole opened at Gop's feet, before her eyes spitting a defenseless George out of it. And that time, Gop had already finished the preparatory motions for the next reverse roundhouse kick. So George is just teleporting all over the place, I getting guess. kicked, kicked all around. That's fucking awesome. What is this? Welcome back. <laughs> Damn. White side of the head, below the white armpit, side of the white knee. As Gop danced and spun like a small cyclone, she kept hitting him wet foot, white foot, wet foot, white foot with successive roundhouse kicks. The fourth one became a sweep, cutting George's feet out from under him and making him fall down, but of course there was no floor there but a pitch black hole, and George was swallowed up once again. I had the same idea, kinda. Ooh. For a book I was writing. But yeah. Gop once again spun around like a small cyclone. George was once again spat out from the ceiling of the arbor. Take this and reflect. The abyss ends with a single strike. Die! Hmm. The full moon. It's raining. The rain comes. The sharp strike of the queen bee pierced the heavens like a rising cyclone. It kicked through George's lower chest as he fell from the ceiling. And then, time flows. George was pinned in midair by Gap's raised leg. Gap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Still pinned in midair, George moaned. Then Gap, with George still hung up on her foot, grinned. I'll admit it. At least your attitude is that of an adult. But that's no good unless you have the power to go with it. Did you know? They say you need three kinds of power to rule this world. The first one is influence. The second is wealth. Do you know what the last one is? I read, I re in, a, I read it in a book. Force, right? Correct. And that's where you're lacking. Gop finally we weased George. She kicked upwards one more time, changing into another roundhouse kick and knocking him into a pillar. Eh. 
No one will fear a monarch without influence, without wealth, or without force. Kinzo possessed all three of those. That's why he reigned as a tyrant. If you're going to call yourself Kinzo's successor, try showing me a bit of that majesty, okay? Come on, how long are you going to sleep there? Stand up, okay? If you don't, you'll fall again, see? Bukugugu. Not bad movements, but I feel they're slightly unfitting for a lady. Bastard! S swaying around all over the place. Aren't you gonna strike back? Don't take me lightly, you fucking bastard. One of a dodged skillfully, jumped back and avoided Jessica's fist, but he still didn't strike back himself. Because of his dodge that was as rapid as a fluttering flag blown by strong winds, Jessica's fist wasn't even able to touch him. Amidst the sensation that her own blood was boiling, Jessica regained her offensive composure. Even though this room was large for a bedroom, it was a very cramped place to keep up such exaggerated dodges in for long. She calmly realized that she had started using not just her fists, but her legs as well. Hoch! Boxing with just your arms make you but half a fighter. Your arms must be like the hot roar of a lion, and your legs must be like the cold snake closing in on its prey. Snakes don't have legs, dumbass! Bukuku, true! Jessica began cornering Wanovay towards the wall with perfect footwork. She didn't let him get around her. Wanovay's magnificent dodges worked flashy, but they needed a large footing. Once cornered, he wouldn't be able to dodge anymore. Jessica knew the characteristics of a weapon, the brass knuckle, very well. This powerful weapon's most notable characteristic was how it didn't give the opponent a chance to defend. Even if they blocked with their arm, that arm would receive direct damage. If it hit the wrong way, it might even break the bone. So she cornered him. With this fist, she'd whittle away at this demon who'd lost any way to escape. Whoops. Oh, when did... Looks like I've finally cornered you, right? Where's everyone being held? Where's that damn geezer? You tell me everything and I'll let you off with nothing more than a plucking that mustache off, got it? That would be a problem. It does take me an hour every morning to set this. Once you're in a cast, you won't even be able to do that, right? Whoops. Gah. One of had blocked Jessica's fist with his arm. He tried to act as though it was no big deal, but it must have hurt her what? Jessica grinned. One of smiled the same way, but twitched swiwi. I see. This certainly does hurt. Here's my last bit of advice. Cry and apologize. That I cannot do. It would ruin my image. Then just crumple. RAPID FIRE! Jessica's fists were buried into one of a, but there was a resistance that seemed too hard and the sound of breaking glass which startled Jessica. At a, at a glance, it looked like one of a had caught Jessica's fist with his palm. That wasn't quite true. When one of a opened his hand, a faint purple glowing barrier like a glass shield appeared, stopping the attack by a hair's breadth. Pulling herself together, Jessica let her fists fly again, but with a truly magnificent gesture, Wonovay caught all of them. I am, after all, a demon. This level of magic is nothing. Even so, you aren't bad at all. If I were a human, I would probably resign right here. Because I am a demon, I can still continue to fight. What are you trying to pull? Is this the end? Are you simply going to attack all the time while neglecting your defense? Huh? Wow. One of A's palms shot to within a hair's breadth of Jessica's stomach. Jessica was knocked away by the purple shield, rolled backwards, and smashed her head on the bed. My shield cannot be broken by a mere human. Don't think that you'll ever be able to touch my body again. In that case, I'll just burst through that shield. Persistent, I see. Yes, a truly fitting spirit for the successor. Perhaps I'll be your opponent for just a while longer. This is also part of an examiner's role. <laughs> Break! Ah! God poked down on George, sneering. George was on a path in the Rose Garden, lying face down in a puddle. 
The merciless Wayne beat down on him so that it looked as though even the heavens were mocking him. Ah ha 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 ha! Stand up, okay? You'll fall again, right? George stood up shakily. It seemed his spirit hadn't given in, but the damage done to his body was fairly significant. Beg for your life. What you're doing now is the same as the fourth option of choosing nothing. You chose the third option, right? If you get down on your hands and knees and apologize, I'll forgive your rudeness towards me. Then I'll guide you down to the dungeon. There, for your beloved Shannon and your own powerless life, you will kill the other hostages one by one. You can do it, right? You did boast about having that resolve. <laughs> George didn't answer, but his gaze was still obstinately resisting surrender. If you are too obstinate, then this time you really will fall to the deepest depths of the abyss, okay? <laughs> Gop's twanked was evident. That was probably queer, even more than it was to George himself, to Shannon's group watching through the three-sided mirror. Hmm. George, that's enough for someone like me. Nasan. If you didn't like me, you wouldn't have to fight with anyone, right, George? Then please abandon me. Please forget about me. There was no way that voice could have reached George, but even so, George answered. No way. I won't surrender. Never surrender! Oh, why not? Because that's my resolve. I'll fight everything for Shannon's sake, and I'll make everything accept us and bless us. Hey, could you tell me something? Why are you willing to go so far for that furniture called Shannon? She's just a washout, isn't she? Rubbish furniture that couldn't even make a satisfactory waitress. I won't permit any more insults against the women I love. So what are you going to do about it? How could a weak kid like you resist me? Loving someone is strength. Because I learned that, I was able to become strong. Shannon, I love you. With just those words, I can stand back up over and over again. Sh Shannon's in the dungeon, right? Professing your love to me won't. No, she heard. That's because it's love. Shannon can hear my words right now. The reason I can't believe that is because of love. You... Shannon can hear. Whoa, weird. Shannon, you aren't furniture. Even if you are furniture, you are mine alone. The only one for me in the world. I want you to be close to me as long as we live. I need you for all eternity. G George. I'm jealous. He has surpassed my husband in smooth talking. That's youth for you. Ah, the strength of love. Then why are you so weak, boy? Does that weakness mean your love is also that weak? <laughs> Even your love for your fiancé is weak. The way your parents died so quickly was weak. Everything about your life is weak. Shannon taught me about love and strength. If you are trying to measure my love towards Shannon by my strength alone, let me teach you about my love. <laughs> so you say. I get it now. You're saying that the way you can still stand up after being kicked down so many times is the strength you received from Shannon. In that case, what did you receive from your parents who got killed way too easily? At that time there was a blackout. Even though they were outside? Hmm. No. This is... The thing blocking Gap's vision was the bottom of George's... <gasps> shoe! Bam! Sword kick. Nasal bone fractured. It had stopped right in front of the tip of Gop's nose. The thing I got from Mom was this kick. 
Yeah, that makes sense. She did uh, Taekwondo or whatever the fuck. Or yeah. Like Several moments after, Gap jumped back. Of course, that was too late. If George hadn't stopped, he would probably have caused the damage he'd announced. And what I got... Oh, and shoot. What I, yeah. And what I got from Dad is fortitude. Anger with a well boiling point isn't something to be truly feared. True anger is disappointed by fortitude. I recognize your violent methods of declaring your intention. I also see that you've slammed my fiance and my parents' honor, and you have no intention of taking back what you said, yeah? You! I now understand your attacks more than enough. So, maybe it's about time to, time to start fighting back. Quit prattling, foolish boy. A pitch black hole opened its mouth at George's feet. But George rapidly opened his legs, straddling the hole. The same move won't work again. It was an extremely smooth dodge, and the upper part of his body didn't even quiver. Fortitude means calmly analyze now your opponent will act, instead of losing your cool. Why? Isn't it obvious? Can't you guess? N no, I can't. It's to counter, to give back exactly what you got, to make them not want and take another pass at you. To make them cover their face in tears and snot and forget to wash it off. To make them want to rub their forehead on the ground and apologize over and over to completely, perfectly, perfectly, and thoroughly beat them until they can't get up. George dashed. Pitfalls opened one after another, but George didn't step in them again. And because he was persistent, he was able to reach Garp a second time. Reverse roundhouse. Jaw fractured. It was stretched out more forcefully and beautifully than Gops had been. Of course, while it centered directly on Gops' face, it stopped a hair's breadth away. Perhaps she couldn't rely on pitfalls at this close range. Gop kicked at George's shins as a diversion, and in the instant of weakness when he tried to deal with that, she aimed the kick at his stomach. It was a bee-like stab by her stiletto heel, but it sliced through the air where George no longer was. Poor axe kick. Collarbone fractured. Gah! By Gap's side, George calmly announced that his foot still raised. If that monarch's heel had swung down, a collarbone fracture would probably have been the least of her worries. This guy's stronger than me? At close range? I need distance. She jumped backwards to open a large gap between them. She jumped and jumped and wept and even flipped in midair, increasing that distance. It should have been magnificent, but for some reason it was very similar to the movements of a small, scared animal. If she opened the distance between them, she'd be able to fight at the range that was a specialty, using a mixture of pitfalls and kicking techniques. You fool! You regret the pride that made you let three chances of defeating me slide, as you fall into the depths of the abyss. Huh? When she magnificently landed and tried to aim a pitfall, a razor-sharp wind cut Gop's bangs. Yes, it cut them. It happened twice. This time, it didn't just stop a hair's breadth away, but scattered her bangs with its air pressure. Armada con Martello. The fundus of the eye fractured with the first strike. Cerebral contusion with the second strike. Garp was too shocked to speak. Cerebral George had closed in over all that distance in an instant, wetting off a fearsomely nimble mid-air double kick. Furthermore, with the accuracy and edge of a laser, it had cut nothing more than several of her bangs. I learned the power of kicks from karate, speed from taekwondo, and freedom of range from cap capoeira. Mom was pretty fickle, but I've learned from studying her various merits. Why don't you hit me? You aren't going to say it's because I'm a woman, right? You spoke of force as a monarch's third power. It looks like you still misunderstand the meaning of that force. In this situation, force doesn't mean hastily wielded. Force doesn't mean hastily wielded violence. It refers to a deterrent knowledge that if someone opposes the monarch, that person won't get away unarmed. A deterrent, you say? In short, this is what it meant. This was why all of George's attacks up until then had stopped a hair's breadth away. These bare misses, which were more difficult than hitting directly, had all been performed so splendidly. Also, if George had wished it, any one of those would probably have crushed Garp. He had, daringly, not done that. 
You said it yourself, right? Force is the power to control. If you crush your opponent with force, you won't be able to control them, right? A monarch's force is something that is only shown. He does not crush. He makes others surrender and adds them to his own fortune. If you start blowing bubbles, I won't be able to make you. I I won't be able to make you guide me to where those dosages are. Garp had to admit it. She had to admit that George understood force in its truest sense. You'll take me to where everyone is. I would advise against resisting. I won't stop short next time. Ack, sorry, Leah. Let me borrow your troops. This guy's too much for me alone to handle. Wait a second. What? Aren't those the three goats that were guarding the fucking cell? Aren't there like infinite goats? Maybe. But I, I thought that, okay, just the way that she worded it sounded like she was taking the goats that Virgilio was using. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Leo. Let me borrow your troops. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So now they're unguarded. Uh, Just because they left to go deal with their emotional problems. The Chester sisters. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As a large black, pitch black hole opened in the sky, thunk, 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 three muscular goat attendants fell out. Yay, Libsyn Podcasting Service. Successful payment. I just got an email. Yay. Yay. Three muscular goat attendants fell out. They surrounded George. Reinforcements. Should I take this to mean you take back all that about me being weak? Uh, I admit it. I made light of your human power. That's wrong. This is the strength of a man who's experienced love. How can you say stuff like that with a straight face? Come, goats, <laughs> crush this man and turn him into meatballs. No, no meatballs. <laughs> These goats are stupid, but it looks like they at least have power. I'll turn you into a corpse that even your fiancé won't be able to recognize. You refuse to surrender and intend to continue fighting? Understood. Know that from now on you will receive a real arm proportional to your own attacks. If you still plan on attacking me, prepare to sustain a great deal of damage. Whoa, oh, that's no. a lot of damage! When George proclaimed that, a faint red magic circle rose up around him. It seemed that George couldn't see it. However, Gop, being a demon, could. M magic Why does this guy have a defensive barrier? And that's a also a counter-attacking type? Is this what you meant by a deterrent? From a demon's perspective, that may have been magic. But in George's eyes, it was... Determination, like Undertale. Exactly like Undertale. <laughs> it was a determination filled with certainty, which would be merciless to anyone who wished to fight anymore, and which would force them to prepare for a significant counterattack. Determination with certainty becomes magic. Hmm. Bronave had been accurately blocking Jessica's fist with his shield, but something felt odd. Even though he was certainly catching them on the shield, he felt his arm get jarred and it hurt. It should have prevented all physical damage. However, the arm from her fist was gradually being transmitted to his arm, plowing up the damage from her fist, not the arm. <laughs> Warnave tried to act like he was composed, but so that this wouldn't be noticed. <laughs> I'm not gonna get worn out. What's wrong, old guy? Starting to get a little tough? No matter how much you attack, it is useless. Why can't you understand that you cannot break my shield? I'm not gonna stop hitting you just because it won't break. No, no matter how hard someone someone's heart is, if you keep on talking to them little by little, it'll eventually start to crack. I believe it. I believe that useless effort doesn't exist in this world. That's why I can live to the fullest. If words will ever, if words will eventually make it through, then the same goes for fists. Give up isn't written anywhere in my dictionary. Hmm. Those words were probably aimed at Cannon. Cannon, who had seemed to reject Jessica's words. But Jessica knew that. No matter how stubborn his heart was, those words would eventually soak through. There's some really good accordion in this in this music. Oh yeah? Alex would love this. Hmm. 
<laughs> she believed that they would show Iwichi's heart, that the day would come when he would stop calling himself furniture and disparaging himself, and that he'd step out into a new life. So Jessica didn't give up. She didn't lose heart. It's stupid, right? I'll bet a guy couldn't understand, right? A girl in love doesn't even think about giving up, just because it's useless. At that time, Wannabe suddenly saw, he saw the wettish glow of white that encircled Jessica's fists. This is not good. An enchantment, is it? This permeating upgrade would be troublesome. Inside her unrelenting fists and determination dwelled the power to succeed no matter what. From a demon's perspective, that was magic. Determination with certainty becomes magic. See, nothing useless about it. Looks like my fists are making it through. Guard your arm, old guy. It seems I will have to get a little more serious. It appears it is as you said. In this world, nothing is useless. That's right. If you give up because something's useless, that's when your life ends. Isn't You'll that what Ballard always says? Oh, it's useless. It's all useless. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I... Oh, fuck. Uh, if you give up because something's useless, that's when your life ends. You'll get through. You can be sure of that. I'm an idiot, so this is the only way I can live. But even so, I'm sure I'll be able to teach canon about a new world someday. So I'm not going to lose heart in a place like this. I'll definitely defeat you. <laughs> Fucking and save everyone. Damn, my daughter's pretty good. Go to somehow open a hole. Arrgh. Klaus was repeating his useless effort to somehow open a hole between the metal bars. Useless. Nothing's. No. Useless. Nothing. Nothing's useless. There's nothing. Yeah, I think that might have been Klaus. Oh. The Wolkelt goats had been swallowed up by those black pitfalls and disappeared. Yeah, I told you. Mm -hmm. They're they're unguarded. <laughs> yep. I I agreed. I agreed. Yeah. Now was their once in a lifetime chance. This was their only chance to break the bars. Stop it! It's impossible, Krups! There's nothing we can do with our bare hands! Let's look for a tool! Don't waste time on the impossible! If you give up because it's useless, then it's all over. That's what my doubters said. Even if my blood, even if my body won't fit, as long as a small person like Shannon or Cannon can make it through. Now that we've reached this point, action is more important than racking our brains. Let's work together. I'll do it too. Cannon, you're a boy, aren't you? Lend a hand. Mm. <laughs> Cannon? Cannon? Cannon! Cannon's dead. Whoops. My bad. Kraus, please stand back. What? What are you planning? Okay. Shannon? Just one more time, let's try struggling. Yes, I too will struggle one more time. No, not just one more time, over and over again. Jessica's voice had reached Cannon. It certainly had permeated into his cold, walk-like heart. And George's voice had reached Shannon. If the love he had shown was embodied by strength, she would have to respond in the same way. Stop. Breaking down the bars! An incredible metal sound rang out. In the first flash, several metal bars were severed horizontally, and in the next flash, they were severed horizontally again, causing many metal bars to clatter to the ground like bamboo shoots cut by a sword. Klaus, Kyria, and Nanjo didn't even have a clue what had just happened. Hmm. Dr. Nanjo, which way down the corridor goes to the mansion? Oh, of course! In and to the left! In and to the left! Let's go, Kraus. Virgilia will notice us at any moment now. What in the world are you guys? We are. When Cannon hung his head a widow and Falta, Shannon swapped his shoulder, smiled, and spoke. We are human. Whoa! Uh, Virgilia, response from the lookout web. It's a jailbreak. The goat guards aren't there for some reason. What? Why? <laughs> it's Gop, isn't it? Taking someone else's summoning without asking. Gop. Gop, gop. 
Confirming battle regulations, requesting permission to fire at the SKBs. Do it. Kill them. Kill. Gop, gop, gop. Gop. What? Ga. What? Hmm. Understood. 4 5, 4 10, preparing for sniping pursuit combat, ammo type guided cluster rounds. Virgilia, an escape prevention barrier, if you would. I'll, 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 I'll. Yes, you're right. Ho oh, oh, ho, I won't let you escape from here. I'll bit my tongue thing, gop gop. What the <laughs> fuck is going on? <laughs> what the, the underground passage in front of them was once again blocked by metal bars. The door was, of course, walked. However, that was no problem for them now. Kane, it's those metal bars again. We are counting on you. Yes, Kraus. Still, that's incredible. I wonder what kind of principle it works on. I mean, that's interesting in principles. All that matters is that he can sever the metal bars and that we can escape. Oh, so he's going for like a functionalist perspective. Mm. All right. Don't worry, Cannon. Do it. Leave it to me. Cannon spliced the metal bars again with his wet curved blade, but there was a harsh, strange noise and the metal bars only had a slight scratch. What's this? These are sturdy! Wrong. They're enchanted. It's one of Virgilia's magic locks. Can you cut through it? Of course, but it will take time. It'll wait three minutes. After taking a deep breath and concentrating his mind, Cannon extended a wet curved sword again. When he pressed it hard against the metal bar, sparks sprayed almost as though he was melting through it with a burner. It looks like we'll be able to catch it, but it'll be tough. Kraus, you've been targeted by the enemy. Please move back. Huh? Pursuers? There's no one coming. Please get behind me. They're aiming for you. 4-5, data received. Target lock acquired. Commencing terrain calculation error correction. Formulating firing curve. Supplemental control point calculations complete. Data link to 410. 410, data received. Checking hazard zone. No problems. O double O loading 48 sub rounds. Individual homing F and F. Guided cluster rounds. Preparations complete. 4-5, firing preparations concluded. Loading guided cluster rounds. 4-10, firing. Whoa! A golden arrow that sparkled gold was fired, weaving a gold trail streaming behind. It drew a curve, went through the door, through the keyhole, down the stairs, towards the underground path at full speed. Something shone! You can't block the golden arrow with a shield. Cannon, interception stance. Let's link. Gatekeeper, understood. It's been a long time since I fought with you, Shannon. Don't screw up. Yeah, I'll be serious. Then there's no problem. Cannon stopped cutting the bars and stood in front of Shannon. Behind him, Shannon closed her eyes, concentrating her mind deep, deep into the darkness of the underground path. Damn. A guided cluster wound is a special kind of arrow made up of 48 subwounds bound together. It explodes mid-flight and divides into 48 mini arrows. The strength of each individual one is low, but they pierce through all shields and possess a perfect wounding and killing power against personnel. And on top of that, each one of the 48 possesses autonomous guidance towards their individual targets. Oh, that could be like an assault rifle or some shit. But mm. that doesn't matter. It's shown. It's divided. Conf confirming guided cluster round division. 46, 7, 8, 48 sub rounds. All rounds locked onto. Interception control. Data linked to cannon. Whoa. Cannon, data received. You're incredible, Shannon. You can actually see all 48. Concentrate on interception prioritization. Trust your. Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> Trust your sister. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Trust your Shannon. <laughs> of course. I don't even need to open my eyes. Commencing interception. Uh, 
the target unarmed. It it was intercepted. Yeah, all oh, forty-eight of them. Ho ho ho! After all, Shannon and Cannon were originally a furniture pair. They're strong when they're together. Ow ow ow! Is this gonna become a melt ulcer or something? Calm down, reload, updating ammo type, precision, light speed, sniper rounds, preparing for precision sniping. Sounds good, yeah, impossible to intercept super high speed rounds, impossible for a mere gatekeeper to defend against, yeah. Precision sniping, roger that, commencing collection of precision firing use data. What in the world was that just now? Don't worry, I don't have a clue either. All I know is that we would have died if not for these two. Cannon, thanks. Go back to the metal bars. The next shot will probably be one we can't intercept. How can we defend against such an attack? We don't let them shoot. Cannon, initiate spirit particle combat countermeasures. At those words, Canton closed his eyes tightly and ground his teeth. With Shannon at the center, a pressure and impact that only non-humans could perceive struck. Whoa. Huh? Firing system error. No good. Rebooting. Uh huh. It's spirit wave jamming. Activate spirit particle safeguards. Hurry. What are you doing? Cover your ears quickly for oh, five. Shit, they hacked him. Oh god. An unseen, unheard impact had struck the Chiesta sisters. Double O and four ten crouched down, covering their ears, but four five didn't make it in time. As she stood bolt up, white, her eyes rolled. Okay. Oh, Kyo, 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 kyo. <laughs> hmm. Sounds like an alarm when you say it like that. Oh. Four or five got damaged. Her IME is busted. Mm, yeah, the noise is also horrible for me. Yeah. yeah. Four or five, four ten, and double O damaged. Abandoning sniping posture. Act. It came straight through the link. If we don't reboot. Raising their spirit particle sensitivity for precision sniping had backfired. They had taken the full brunt of the spirit particle shockwave Shannon had released, and not only 4-5, who had been hit directly, but also Double O and 4-10, who had been winked with her, were taken down. Are you okay? I'll make you some more delicious black tea later, so get a hold of yourselves. My apologies for rebooting. Please wait several hundred sure. seconds. All of this Chiesta sisters had fallen over. They would probably get back up eventually, but it looked like it would be hard for them to return to the battle lines for a while. So, Furniture was able to repel weapons, if only for a moment. I see, a plot to entertain that child truly will be filled with unexpected turns. Virgilia tore through the air with a large gesture, motioning as though opening a door. Come, arise, goat attendants. It's time to work. Catch and kill the escapees. Corpses are fine. We can just revive them anyway. A gold-colored door opened in the air, and countless giant goats with muscular bodies peeked their faces out. Come now, hurry. There are five escapees, so the fastest five of you win. There will be a wonderful prize, so give it your all. Give it your all. The jury clapped her hands, urging them on. A prize? After facing each other at those words, the goats all rushed to the door at once, trying to get out, making the exit as packed as the Tuzai or the Yamanote whale winds in the morning. <sighs> Each wanted to get out first, so none of them could get out. Virgilia held her head in frustration. <laughs> They're all trying to leave at the same time. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Through the same door. That's yeah, okay. Why the same door? Why the same? They're kind of because dumb. They, they because they're stupid. Yeah, they're stupid. Yeah, okay. By the time, Cannon had managed to cut th enough bars to make a quack that could be swept through. It had been a bit of work for Klaus, large as he was, and Nanjo with his lethal waist, but even so, they all managed to make it through. But after they did, they only had a couple seconds to be relieved. Immediately, another set of metal bars blocked the way in front of them. Oh wait, this happened- okay, so, the, all, so all the goats tried to get at the same time, but these guys actually took their time and used the skills that they had to get- Yeah. Them. Yeah, okay. <laughs> This certainly is secure. I'll bet they really didn't want the people in here to escape. Kanan, sorry, but I'll have to ask you again. It may be tough, but please. There was sweat on Kanan's forehead. You could tell at a glance that cutting the metal bars, which had been made even more solid by magic, had physically exhausted him. Yes, leave it to me, Kraus. 
Only you can do it. Please, we're counting on you. Only he could do it. Holding tightly onto those words, Cannon concentrated his mind once again and set himself to the task of cutting metal bars again. Enemies are coming from behind. Multiple targets. Yeah, this time even we can tell. The ground's really shaking. I can tell that some ridiculous monsters are rushing at us. Don't worry. I'll use a magic lock to make a blockade of the metal bars we just came through. Mere goats won't be able to break it. Shannon held her hand out towards the metal bars they had gone through. But she stopped right away. What is it? Fragilia has started neutralizing the spirit wave jamming. It will be bad if it's broken and we'll lose the initiative once the Chester sisters are rebooted. Hmm. I'll make you pay in full for bullying these cute bunnies. If you're trying to gain the advantage with those clever spirit particles of yours, I'll tear all that away and rob you of them. Hmm. Nathan, concentrate on the spirit wave jamming. The gap in those metal bars is too narrow for those goats. It should hold them back for a while. I don't have a clue what you're saying, but... We know it's something pretty bad. Kyrie picked up a metal bar that Cannon had just cut. Klaus had no weapon, but he rubbed his fists, and the two of them glared into the depths of the underground passage where the shaking was coming from. I need to use the bathroom really quick. I'll be like ten seconds. Okay. What? Here we are. We're back again. Back again in the place where the bathroom goes, and they're running. They're running from the demons, the goat guys, the rabbit girls. The blue haired witch demon. They've got a lot of stuff to run away from right now, and we're we're getting to the bottom of, of this chase. We're gonna see if they can make it away, cause there's a gate in front of them. And there's a gate behind them. They don't know what they're gonna do. Cannon's gotta cut the bars. But the goats might get to them before Cannon cuts the bars. What's gonna happen? I don't know. I know what's gonna happen actually. There's going to, ooh, Mike isn't even here, I can talk about it. There's going to be loser flags, and they're going to lose because it's a visual novel. It's a uh, yeah, uh, funny, funny fourth wall break. There's going to be a funny fourth wall break. Mike doesn't know about it. <laughs> and then George and Jessica are going to kill each other by accident. That's, uh... Oh, are you back? I hear you. Uh, oh, there you like are. 40, more like 40 seconds. Okay, awesome. You're back. I just told everybody what's go what's about to happen. <laughs> oh, shit. While you were gone. Okay. I believe these are the final metal bars blocking the way. How far is it to the mansion from here? Quite a walk. The path is even, but I seem to remember walking for 30 minutes. So if we run all out, it'll be half that time. They couldn't tell for sure since they didn't have the three-sided mirror, but there was no guarantee that George and Jessica would still be all white against demon opponents after all this time. If we run at twice the speed of walking, it'll be 15 minutes, and twice that speed would make it 8 minutes. And if we sprint all out double that speed, it won't even take 5. No problem. What an unreasonable calculation! <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> but but that's how you calculated a fire. My sincere apologies, everyone. Please watch my back. Leave it to us. Can you cut the bars as fast as you can? Shannon, you concentrate on jamming this witch called Virgilia or whatever. Kyrie and I will defend against our pursuers. Then the wars of beasts swung out from the darkness, and several fiery, glowing, bright red eyes appeared. Goats that were several levels more massive than the gods were rushing with an incredible force. The tremors they created were almost like an earthquake. They brought a frightening intensity and terror, but Kyrie actually laughed with relief. Those massive bodies wouldn't be able to go through the quack in the bars. <coughs> The group of goats crashed into the metal bars with a fierce sound like that of a twain colliding with a dead end. Clumps of dirt fell here and there from the ceiling and you could tell that the metal bars had bent as if coaxing. Their charging power probably was on par with a twain. If the metal bars hadn't been there, they would likely have overwhelmed the five of them and crushed them in an instant. When the group of goats pressing up against the metal bars noticed the five people right in front of them, they let out a terrible howl trying to intimidate the five. Or maybe that was out of pain from their game of push and shove. 
Hmm. One calm goat among them figured out what should be done about the metal bars, then grabbed two of them with its massive arms and began bending them as though opening double doors. Kyrie sharply jabbed her metal paw at that goat's vitals. The goat went out a war of anguish. It probably hurt a lot, but that was all. It wasn't enough to bring it down. Gross. Still holding the metal pole she had stuck out, Kyrie will vanquish the opposite tip to Kraus. Kraus ran there with all his might, jumped up and kicked down with all his weight and kicking power combined. All of that, his destructive power was focused on a single pole, dwelling it in. Damn! Man, I wish I had a suit that was a little, looked like muscles and shit. That would be great. A suit that looked <laughs> like muscles? Yeah, like the goat guy's suits. That would be awesome. Wait. Look at how muscly their I mean, suits oh, are. Oh, right, right, because they're, like, defined, yeah. Mm. Like, it sticks to them? Yeah. Uh, are you okay? Please don't rub the affected area. I'll prescribe some medicine later. Take care. As what? the goat who taken a pile bunker to its vitals wide with teary eyes, it nodded its head. Ninja. Looks like our link isn't that bad either. We won't lose to Shannon and Cannon. Hmm, who is the goat? Naturally, for a loving family like us. We can do it if we take them together. Next, that one on the right. Understood. You really are a good wife. That Rudolph must have grumbled a little too much. Oh, tell me about it later. Rudolph, suddenly turning pale in heaven won't do you any good, okay? The goat's massive bodies were buried in woe's bushes. Even taking into account that a wag's power is three times that of an arm's, this strength surpassed common sense. To think that those massive bodies had been kicked in the chin and thrown through the air was too fierce. Even George seemed a little surprised. Wait, how does George know? To, th to think that my kick works on monsters too. Now there's. What, how does George know what? How does George know about. Wait. About. He, he's fighting the goats that were guarding their jail cell in the first place. Alright. Right! Fuck, I'm retarded. Alright, there we go. <laughs> It's because of your counterattack style barrier. The attacking power that grazes you is added onto your own. Your kick has been supplemented by those monsters' superhuman strength. Oh, well, I don't really get it, but isn't that just perfect for me? No matter who attacks me, they should, they should be prepared for a counterattack of equal measure. Non aggressive defense. That's my policy. That's why Gap couldn't easily touch him. The counterattack style barrier had no defensive power. However, because of its countering ability, it could be useful in defense by making the opponent hesitate to attack. The goats had been foolish and so had attacked without worrying, but this second effect had worked in full against Gop. These guys really are dull. When, you pa when your power's even, it's always an advantage to have a smaller build. He worried dodge the wog-like arms. When those arms touched the barrier that protected George, they went off a strong, red white. The tip of the counter-attacking foot would then gain the same sparkle and the superhuman power of the goat added to its own. The second goat fell forward and floated in the air for a second. Then George's next roundhouse kick missed right over the falling goat's head. For an instant, the goat hoped it might get away with its wife. But no, a heel was dropped onto the back of its head and it was forced to kiss the ground. Going from a high roundhouse kick into a... Going from all around, oh, yeah, all around kick into a Neri Chagi is a pretty basic, right? Works pretty well every now and then. You're getting really into it. I like it. Me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's good. Mm. This guy's a problem. Seriously, a problem. What do you mean, demons? What do you mean, witches? The rules of Rock and Jimmy are the, are the issue me a family. I'll make you the physically. I'll make you physically aware of that. You. The only way to finish off George, now that his body was wrapped up in a counterattack style barrier, was to deny him a chance to counterattack. Nothing to do but suck him into the abyss next, then kick and drop him, kick and drop him, kick and drop him, until she kicked him to death. 
But George had already completely seen through the faint warning signs that told of the appearance of Gap's pitfalls. If he could jump over that next pitfall, then this time he would probably pulverize Gap's head with his whirlwind white kick without holding back in the slightest, just as had been done to his parents. She was able to envision that scene vividly. Gop hated Kinzo more than ever for calling her out to this ridiculous island. Even though Wanave held out a shield, he had finally started using his hands. Without a more powerful shield, he wouldn't be able to block Jessica's fists anymore. The enchantment on Jessica's fists grew the more she fought. The permeating upgrade had already grown several times and those fists had also been given an impact upgrade, a piercing upgrade, and a speed upgrade, making them fists worthy to fight on par with a demon. What's wrong? Starting to get tired? Haha. <laughs> you're getting all slow. No, your movements and thoughts and kinetic vision have been rapidly enhanced. My movements have not changed from the beginning. Your movements are beginning to catch up to me. And you still won't fight back? This is my style. However, I cannot allow it to continue at this rate. It's about time for me to get serious and end this. Wanave's face turned into an expression he hadn't shown before. It was full of respect for Jessica in a truly demonic way. Because it was an expression he only showed for enemies who made him get serious. Purple shield. What? What the? With a gesture of his whole body that you couldn't call elegant, Wanave held out a shield with all his strength, a shield the size and thickness of a wall. It was more tenacious than a simple shield. It literally was a wall. And on top of that, with all of Wanave's magical power, it pushed Jessica back bit by bit. Did he plan on pushing her back against the wall and crushing her to death? Hmm. Rising Jessica to Pink Floyd. What? Rising from Pink Floyd the wall. Oh. Jessica tried to break through the wall with both fists, but it was solid. Without any exaggeration, it was solid. Is this what you call serious? No problem, I'll break through it! <laughs> I will not let you this time. This wall is somewhat different. Here, allow me to enchant it as well. No, don't enchant when it. When Wanave made a magic sign almost like a ninja, the wall glowed red for just an instant, and some kind of ominous power dwelt within it. Jessica was able to recognize that almost immediately with her body. Every time a fist hit the wall, pain as though glass fragments had scattered and hit all over her body, we bounded against her. I upgraded it with attack reactive armor, an exceptional item that will decrease the force of your attacks by counterbalancing them, and which can even counterattack with reactive fragments. It's perfectly fine to keep punching it, but doing so will damage you as well. <laughs> In short, it's an endurance test between me and your wall. No problem. Would you fall to your knees first, or be pushed into the wall first? Allow me to observe. Except I might break through it and smash through the whole wall uh, along with your face, right? Watch it! Without hesitation, Jessica punched using both fists. Each time she did, a large amount of shards scattered, torturing her entire body. Instantly, several wet gashes appeared all over her. She grimaced at the intense agony, but her eyes were burning with fighting spirit, and her whips curved in a grin that stood in sharp contrast to the pain. Kanan, are you done yet? We're fine. But the, man the metal bars are blocking them, and don't seem to be. Just a little more. There's no stopping these guys. These metal bars might break just from them shoving each other. The group of goats made the metal bars queak. Several arms grabbed the bars, twisting them with superhuman strength. However, some bars were being pulled in opposite directions by different hands. Apparently, they really were stupid. Hmm. The way those countless hands grabbed the metal bars sometimes happened to match up by chance. Several hands grasping two metal bars neatly put their power together and pulled the bars to the weft and right. The incredible sound of metal bending could be heard, and that quack was getting larger bit by bit. They attacked the arms of those goats one by one, but they weren't getting anywhere. They couldn't stop the gap from spreading weft and white. At that time, there was a loud metal sound behind them. Cannon had finally finished cutting. Quickly! Kyrie! Kyrie, ladies first. You go next, Dr. Nanjo. 
Kraus, please leave this place to me. Mm, this is... Cannon's wed sword that had cut the metal bars disappeared. Oh? Sorry. We've entered Virgilia's spirit particle area of influence. Our magic power has been neutralized. Oh no! Ha ha ho! How dare you resist me this far? I, who was called the Great Witch, you can no longer use your magic in that underground passage. A magic circle column do a complex magical formula with Virgilia at the center. With such genuine magic being used, Shannon's power couldn't even compete. On the contrary, it was surprising that she had withstood as long as she had. Spirit particle supremacy ensured. Come, Chiesto sisters, it's your turn now, White. Wait, are you still rebooting? Why are kids these days so bad at waking up? Mm, my apologies, we're all different versions. Why do all the shortcuts and pull-down menus get all screwed up every time you change versions? Yeah. Uh, something, something else. Mm, uh, blah, you, blah, did blah, not, blah. you did not shut down correctly last time. Uh, you did not shut down correctly last time. Administrator privileges, what's going on? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay, fix me quickly. Wah. Call the Imperial Guards troubleshooting team. What? You can't help us without a user code? <laughs> did you try to turn it on and off? <laughs> Four five at the user code. Yeah. Okay. 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 It just sounds like nine 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 in Japanese to me. Have her write it on some paper. She can't reinstall her IME, so she can't write characters. Yeah. You take your time fixing yourself. I'm going. <laughs> See ya. Sorry. <laughs> fucking darn rabbits. Damn rabbits. Fucking... The narrow underground passage was packed with goats, truly like a commuter twain in the morning. But Julia was shocked again by this congestion. What are you doing? Huh? You want to go first because you want the prize? You're getting in each other's way because you don't want the other goats to steal the prize from you? <laughs> hmm. God damn it. <laughs> you stupid god! I'm going, so make way. What? You don't want to? But Julia is trying to steal your prize? Oh my god. Why are you all standing arm in arm? Ah, uh, tight cramped. <laughs> when did it become a goat only car? When? Oogil! You, that kid who just touched my butt, get off at the next station! What? Hmm. What's with you? Come this way, you say. Uh, uh, the five and Klaus's group dashed through the passageway with all their strength. They couldn't dawdle around in an underground place like this. They had to quickly join up with the children on the surface. If they could meet up, there would no longer be any more solo. What? At oh, that time, a, a terrible wumble started chasing them. Had the pursuers finally made it through the metal bars? But they couldn't see anyone when they turned around. However, that wumble in the dirt that fell here and there from the ceiling grew closer and closer, finally catching up with them and even going past them. It felt almost like being chased by ghosts. Hmm. For a second, they thought they'd gotten away until the ceiling in front of them fell in and a single goat stood in their path. Virgilia was sitting on his shoulder. This wise child knew a shortcut. What a good kid you get first prize. Later, you can have some handmade mackerel curry. No. Maybe it really... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a wee wee was happy about that dubious prize. The massive goat showed its joy by putting its hands together and writhing. Virgilia wept down, laughing that this time it was finally checkmate. Damn, it's no use. Our magic has been completely killed. Not yet. Even without magic, we still have these bodies. Don't be ridiculous. There's no way you could fight a monster like that without that strange power. Stay back, children. I'll do something about this, so escape past the size of that monster while I distract them. I won't let you. Ho 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 ho. When Virgilia clapped her hands, a purple magic circle wall appeared behind her, stealing even the faint hope that Klaus had been betting on. Is there nothing more to be done? No, not yet. Even Jessica thought I must do as well. Uh, are you serious? It's not possible. Not against that massive monster. 
Don't be absurd. Kraus, let us think of another way. If you think of something, say it. Until then, it looks like I'll have to demand something. Come on, get back. Take care. Ho 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 ho. My my crap. You intend to fight this child alone? Nah. Y you never know. In fact, it's always possible to get in a lucky shout. Ho ho ho, you think you can win even with a fluke? Allow me to explain so that even one who is so blissfully unaware of his place can understand. What? Ho ho ho, if you were to wield 100% of your strength, your power level is at most 6. In comparison, this child has a power level of a thousand. In short, even if there were a hundred of you, you definitely couldn't win. Well, it's true that there are uncertain elements in a fight. Let us admit that your power level has a slight scaling factor to it. But even so, your chances of defeating this child are blah 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 something. What all did right, it say at the end? Point zero 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 one percent. Do you understand? You don't even have a one in ten thousand chance of victory. Ho ho ho. Virgilia and the goats guffawed together. Damn it. If I've got one in ten thousand chance, that means the payoff will be ten thousand times greater, right? Also, there were counting numbers at the end. Like, there's a one, two, and three. I wonder what that is. Like, the amount uh, of... I, I wonder. I wonder what that is. The amount of insults? <laughs> or something like that? I know what that is. Yeah, I, know you, I know you know what that is. Explain the Dark Horse. Seeing a ticket like that makes me want to buy it right away. Ho oh, oh, ho oh, but the coin to buy it is your life, and you've only one of those, yes? However, I can understand why you still want to entrust that miracle to fate. Therefore, I shall praise your courage for standing against us without fear, and give you a bit of a handicap. This child will fight with only his left arm. Well, even so, I have absolutely no intention of losing to you. Come to think of it, what's that bing-bong, bing-bong noise I keep hearing? Yeah, v very well. I'll take that challenge. Whether it uses its left arm or not, I'm sure I'll kill it with a single strike. I also, I also only have a single chance at the strike. I can only bet everything on that. That's absurd, Kraus. I know you used to do boxing, but wasn't that as far back as your college days? No, no, even if you were a pro boxer, there's no way you could defeat a monster like that with one strike. Shut up, Manjo. That would be true if it were a match in the ring, but while Krauss's chance to bet on this hope is faint, it does exist. He's betting everything on that hope. You aren't saying, but there's no way that would work out. Krauss. Watch me. I'll settle this with a single strike. Ho ho ho, how shallow. I know what you're after. The distance between the two of them is more than 10 meters. If the goat and Krauss both step in with all their strengths to settle the fight with a single blow, their power will be double what is normal. Both will crash together, so it's a relative four times normal. Even if, on top of that, the strike lands on a weak point for a critical hit, that will only double the power again. In short, Krauss's maximum power level of 6 times 8 would be 48 at the most. He might or might not be able to win if he repeated that lucky shot a full 20 times. <laughs> if you're killed every time you take a hit and your damage still accumulates. Let's see, perhaps you might finally win when we get to episode 24, yes? No. <laughs> if only the series could stretch on so long. <laughs> Either way, you don't even have a slight chance at victory. Yeah. Hey, it's seriously, dead. what did that bing bong sound? Screw you, let me be, let me bet everything on a single strike. You have no reason to hold back either, goat. Come at me seriously. Goat coon. Ho ho ho, he's requesting that you go all out. Smack him with a single serious strike and turn him into chunks of meat. As the goat got excited and beat his chest over and over, took a position as though preparing for a sprint. Ho ho ho, is this what you wanted? Bet your hopes on the greatest, what's that say? On the greatest limit of skipping. your power level. And despair when even that gets you nowhere. It's running again. What the heck? It's really starting to get on my nerves. Here I go. Ready? The goat okay. howled in response. Then with a match timing that only the men confronting each other could comprehend, the two wept forward like bullets shot out of a gun. The men howled, collecting the strength from all over their bodies into one arm each. 
The goat's fiery, glowing eyes query walked onto Krauss's face. He could perfectly see a vision of when he would step forwards, when he would punch through Krauss and blow him away, and when he would win perfectly. The long, painful days up to that point drifted through the goat's mind. Those painful days of twaining when his senpais had picked on him. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Those faint glimpses of the warm concern his senpais felt for him. And the joy of that day his power had been acknowledged when he had accepted as been accepted as one of the comrades. <gasps> one of the siblings. I never showed proper respect to my Oh fuck <clears throat> I never showed proper respect to my parents. That's right. Didn't I plan to wash my hands of this business when this job was over? And how the hell does that end? Why does it keep doing that? And return to my hometown. I'm sorry, little goat sister. Your Oni chat always caused you so much trouble. And I actually have a childhood friend, and I'm gonna marry her when I get home. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> well. Fucking goat backstory. Uh. <laughs> yeah, no. Stop tripping all those loser flags. You can't handle that punch. Dodge it. It happened the instant before the two crashed and the punches crossed. You fool, Virgilia. Looks like you failed to make a calm and rational decision. You mustn't take that punch. Knock it aside. The very instant the goat's weft swayed and Klaus's white swayed crossed, the goat obeyed Virgilia's order with a super fast reflexes and pulled his swayed back, repelling Klaus's punch. <laughs> That's right, Virgilia's decision probably had been wise. After all, the number of loser flags amplifies the power level of one's opponent. Mm. That was close. If you had taken that punch after twipping so many loser flags, imagine just how great a force it would have been amplified to. Come on, from there, smash the completely open right side of his face with the right straight. What? That promise about fighting with only your left arm? Ho <laughs> ho, aren't promises made to be broken? Gah, tripped another one! Loser. I'm disappointed, Virgilia. You really have lost your composure. What's that? How was I not composed by noticing it beforehand and making him avoid it? Why is that, Kyrie? If they had crashed like that, wouldn't it have been Krauss's? Ah, I see. Even with 20 loser flags, that's not enough. Krauss's and the goat's double wash made for f times four. With a miracle as an ally, the firm promise of a critical hit doubled it again for times eight. On top of that, there was an amplification of times twenty, equal to the number of loser flags, making for times one hundred and sixty. At a glance, that was an incredible amplification, but even so, Krauss's power level was six. Even multiplied by one hundred and sixty, it only made for a power level of nine hundred and sixty. Just barely below the goat's one thousand. That's why I said you weren't composed. It's your blunder. If they had crashed like that, you would have won. Ho ho ho, even if that were so, it all comes to the same thing if this right straight smashes Krauss's head. Die, Uthi Romeo Krauss. Take this, the strongest strike of the boxing world. Kapow. After repelling Klaus's white straight, the goat's white straight attacked the white side of Klaus's face, which had been left open. But there it crossed Klaus's weft straight. The two punches crossed and time stopped as each aimed for the face of the other. Ho, 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 to think that it would be time for a simultaneous strike. But his power level stopped at times 160, making it 960. It doesn't reach up to my child 1000. No, Virgilia, it's your loss. Why? You made him repel the first cross counter. Certainly, if another right straight after that were to hit, Kraus would probably be in pieces. However, that was crossed. That's no good. Sorry, but this is a complete loss for you and this goat. A cross counter has four times the destructive power of a normal punch. Oh this is common knowledge in the boxing world. The and if it's blocked and the white straight hits, then it's a double cross counter with eight times the destructive power. This is also common knowledge in the boxing world. <laughs> and if that is crossed, <laughs> then by the principle of leverage, the triple cross would multiply what? this thing by what is it? By 12. By 12. This is also painfully common knowledge in the boxing world. What the fuck? It's even written in a Minimei Shobu book. 
sure. Krauss's power level is six. This is all natural boxing stuff. It's all natural boxing. Okay, okay. The that rushing from both sides is times four. The critical hit is times eight. And Ooh. times 160 for tripping too many loser flags. And times 12 again for the triple Krauss counter. Times 1920. <laughs> its power level is 11,520. Whoa. Growth is punts now. The power easily win the first Tenkaichi Budokai. This result was brought about by Krauss's persistence in not giving up on victory until the end and your pride. Without either, this strength would not exist. You fought well. You may now fall. Nanjo clapped a goat on the shoulder. Hmm. Your, your only chan gave it his all. As the spa queen drops from the goat's eye scattered, he bent backwards and fell on Virgilia. Oh, girl, heavy, get off me! <laughs> the goat's massive body was too heavy for the slender Virgilia. She wiggled around with it on top of her, but it didn't look like she'd be able to escape. In that instant, the barrier of Virgilia had sealed, broke. Yay! Don't take it personally. It was the principle of leverage that led to your defeat. I wonder how the principle of leverage applied to that counter. It's an eternal mystery. Let's escape while we can. You take care too, goat son. Well then, excuse us, Virgilia. Bow. Wait. Wait up. Get this off me. Cup, 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 cup. After that, there was nothing to block their way. They ran intently through the underground passage. <sighs> Jessica had finally been cornered with a wall at her back. Wonave advanced with his magic circle wall bit by bit and would probably crush her against the other wall eventually. Considering the distance, she threw out her fists. This would be her final strike. Jessica had dealt out many punches so far. The wall wasn't invincible. It had already started to quack, and it wouldn't be strange for it to smash at any moment. However, due to the rebounding damage, Jessica also had cuts all over her body and was all worn out. Please put a stop to this. I don't intend to crush you. It is up to the master to decide how to deal with you. However, I also intend to congratulate you specially for your good fight. C quit fucking around. Not yet. It isn't over yet. Your wounds all over your body. It's all you can manage just to stand, is it not? It seems you plan on putting all your strength into this final strike. However, that final strike will be fatal for you. The damage reflected by one of A's magic circle wall was proportional to the strength of the attack. Jessica's all-out punch would be bounced back onto her. The more all-out she went, the more suicidal it would be for Jessica. I, I get it. I know that. I am warning you, stop this now. This is for your own good. Stop bluffing. Your wall is already about to break, right? I can tell by the feeling of after punching it so much, okay? That was a fact. One of A's wall was already on the verge of breaking, and on top of that, Jessica's fists had been imbued with an unimaginable magical power, uh, attack power by now, and their destructive strength defied the imagination. In the worst case, that destructive power might even pierce the defensive wall, smash one of A as well, and create an expansion connecting this womb to the next. However, that damage would rebound on Jessica as well. She wouldn't escape unharmed. I will say it just one more time. Stop! I say this out of consideration for you. Shut the fuck up. Dad, prepare yourself. Jessica howled. Putting all the strength of her greatest and final destructive power into her fist, she warred. Weird. The three goats had been beaten down long ago. Without straining to breathe in the slightest, George cautiously closed the distance between him and Gop. He was after her. He was planning on bringing her down with a single strike. Gop was also aiming for a single strike. If she wet that chance wide, she would be killed this time. Aren't you gonna use your pitfalls? Ack! Even the tiny opening during the time it took to open the hole would prove fatal with George as an opponent right now. 
Gop cautiously calculated the distance and timing, but even as she did, George closed the gap between them. If you won't come, I will. G go ahead. There's no point in cheap tricks anymore. I'll settle it with this kick of mine. For an instant, she thought George's body blurred, but then only his jacket was floating in the air. The moment she thought, ah, darkness covered Gop. George, with his heel swung up high, was attacking from the sky like a massive dragon. It, it worked! This is my victory, Ushiromiya, George! What? You Gop were... opened a vast pitfall with her in the center, swallowing up George along with herself. The two were swallowed up by the pitfall and sped out from the ceiling of the arbor. But that was what Gop had been after, so she alone landed widely. However, there was another pitfall in George's landing spot. No! <laughs> gotcha, Ushiromiya, George! It was fun, so die. The Ushiromiya family headship would be wasted on the likes of you, so I'll finish you right here, right now. Anga! George once again fell from the ceiling of the arbor. He had probably been dropped the same distance as falling off the roof of a two-story building. In the sky, he couldn't control his posture in any way. It was impossible to resist or defend or avoid. As Gop spun like a whirlwind, she concentrated all of her energy on the sharp tip of her stiletto heel. This was the final strike to perform his requiem. The final strike of the queen bee that would born to heaven, knocking him down into that true abyss. Welcome to the abyss. This is the end of the line for you. She closed in on her prey and stuck her foot up into the sky. At that time, she saw George's face. Even though he was in midair, he was calmly adjusting his glasses with the middle finger of his white hand. And his posture was still preserved as that of an axe kick. Without the faintest deviation, he aimed for Gop's forehead. I had already hypothesized that this mood would come up. What? If I had jumped to make the person on the ground taste my eel, my posture would have collapsed a long time ago. Long ago. However, my posture hasn't collapsed in the slightest. Do you know why? You don't mean... From the very beginning, I aim to make a person two stories below taste my eel. Ooh, oh, oh, ah. It's your loss, miss. Ding dong. Wah, take this. The final strongest punch that Jessica had raised reached the wall and was sucked in. It was sucked into a black large hole that had suddenly opened on the wall. Well, I did tell you to stop. Whoa. What happened? This is... Uh... 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 Actually, I wasn't even close to being in a pinch. Sorry. Damn it, they're fighting each other! Jessica's fist had gone for George's stomach, and George's axe kick had wind up on Jessica's head. The shocking destructive power imbued in Jessica's fist crushed George's organs and scattered his abdomen. The same destructive power in George's axe kick smashed half of Jessica's head and scattered its contents in the same manner. No! Poofed! <laughs> Didn't I tell you about a witch's acting prowess? Hey, hey, Beato, what do you think? Were you watching? Oh my god. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Not bad, just as planned. You really do get it, Gop. Woohoo! Beato and Gop casually high fived each other. <laughs> Thanks, Ronave. Thanks for the gift. I'll return Jessica's corpse. Separate the corpses of the two who are close. Does this mean the second twilight is over? Gap drops Jessica's corpse through a pitfall, and all the chunks were thrown into Jessica's womb, as carelessly as throwing something into the trash. Jessica's corpse and lumps of flesh fell from the ceiling and poured out all over her womb. Ronave shook his head slightly at this gruesome change of scenery. My apologies, Jessica. I did warn you. However, 
The true art of us demons, that is, foreseeing this conclusion and giving you advice I know you wouldn't listen to, really isn't something a human could understand. Boo goo 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 goo. It really was fun, kid, but you play with words a bit too much. Is maybe it's about time I started fighting back really the best you've got? <laughs> Are you trying to be someone from a light novel or something? <laughs> In the arbor, Buddha, we decorated by George and Jessica's scattered blood and guts, Scarp enjoyed a wild laugh for a while. But she quickly realized that, in all seriousness, this was a little too filthy and undignified, and she snapped her fingers. As she did, a cloud of gold butterflies rose up around her, stuck to each of the bits and blood stains, and dropped them. Then George's corpse returned bit by bit, and the brutal corpse with its guts torn out was repaired into a queen corpse that looked like it was sweeping. With this, was this some act of sportsmanship towards a dead rival? Hmm. The heavens were split, because Garp had lifted her wig high, pointing at the sky. See you, lover boy. This is game over for real. Splat. Without a trace of mercy, that foot stepped down and was buried into George's forehead. The stiletto heel that was as sharp as a weapon pierced George's forehead. With a bloop, it was pulled out. It was like a mark proving that Garp certainly had finished him by her own hand. Woof! Jesus. One of they also returned Jessica's corpse to its original form, and unlike how it had been with George, he restored Jessica's wife. Uh, <coughs> uh, what in the world is this? A dream? No, that is wrong. Mm, you certainly so did pass away, Jessica. Mm. You should be well aware of the memory of your final moments. Mm. Jessica's mind was burning. For some reason, she remembered being thrown somewhere and having George's heel smash her head. Am I alive? No, you are dead. With my magic that will only be postponed for a scant three minutes. After three minutes, the magic will end and you will return to being a tragic corpse with half its head crushed. What, what do you say? <laughs> Death is brutal. In most cases, you aren't even given the time to ready your heart. But to praise you for fighting so bravely, I've decided to give you this time. Perhaps you should sort out your regrets from this world in those three minutes. I can also decide to take you along with me during those three minutes. But the power that had burned through Jessica's body until a second ago had been completely lost. Jessica was aware of that herself. She was already dead. No. And that is all for me. If you would excuse me. It was fun, Jessica. One of eight turned his form into a cloud of gold butterflies and disappeared. All that remained was the sound of the wind and wane and the figure of Jessica as she crouched down, leaning against the wall. Jessica could tell. She probably we really would revert to the corpse she had been after three minutes. Was there anything she could do in those three minutes? She stood up and with a shaky gait, took the phone that was on the desk. H Hello? Is that Jessica? Jessica? What is it? Are you okay? <laughs> they got me. Are you okay? Did you get injured? I'll come and save you right now. No, it's already too late. I'm already dead, or so I hear. <laughs> but by the time you get here, Battler, I'd be a corpse with half its head split open. Crap, that damn geezer. Wait there, I'm coming right now. Listen to me, Battler. Listen closely, okay? Now I totally see why Gota and Kumasawa were evasive by the time about the time the six in the dining hall got killed. Those guys aren't human. Wh what What are you talking about? I saw it, so what am I supposed to do? Those guys warp, warp around and set up barriers and what are they, and whatever and do whatever they want, okay? It's like some kind of man manga or anime hell, and we seriously can't keep up. <laughs> From the very beginning, fighting was useless. They really aren't opponents that you'll be able to fight with that hat sand spear you're so proud of. 
A line of uh, a line of blood whipped down from Jessica's forehead. George, George is done for two. George is done for two. That was an instant death. <laughs> the next test is yours, Battler. I wonder if your test will go the same way as ours. Be careful and don't misunderstand. You mean both test? No, don't misunderstand. And assume that your enemy is human. The enemy isn't human. They're demons that can freely wield the terrifying magic. No matter what, don't get the wrong idea about that. <laughs> Be c careful. A wine of blood dripped down from Jessica's mouth as well. The left half of her head started hurting. Jessica realized that she was about to return to the corpse she had been. When 13 people die, the Golden Witch will revive. Six were killed, including Mom. That's the first Twilight. Then George and I were killed for the second Twilight. So once five more people are killed, the ceremony will be complete and the Witch will revive. I hope Dad and the rest are safe. If they aren't, the one to, the one to test you might be the resurrected Beatrice herself. Batwell already didn't understand what Jessica was saying, but from her tone, he realized that she knew she was about to die. So even though he didn't understand the situation, he urged her to give it her all. Give it your all. Ha, I said I'm already dead. See ya. It looks like it's time. Good luck on your test. I hope you can become the head. Dun, dun, dun. Damn, dude. Jessica. Jessica. Hey, answer me. Jessica. But was soulful voice could be heard from the dangling receiver. As she leaned against the wall in the corner, crouched down, Jessica's head had been half smashed. Ugh. This place is... Oh my god, it's still going. Jesus Christ. Is this a whale? Where is this? Kyrie stuck her face out of the well and then Klaus showed himself too. When he realized that they could see the back of the mansion from beyond a grove of trees, Klaus knew more or less where they were. To think that here, in a certain well, there had been a hidden underground passage which led to a hidden mansion. This really is tough on this old body. I usually came up from a different spot with real stairs. If you just unlock it. I will ask you to tell me about the layout of this place in detail later, Dr. N Dr. Nanjo. Shannon, are you okay? Grab hold. I'm fine. Cannon, quickly. Cannon climbed up a ladder and out of the shaft that was disguised as a well. It was probably quite deep. When he looked down for the first time, he realized how far he'd come up. Yee <laughs> firing! Bang! As Cannon was about to finally crawl out of the well, a hole the size of a basketball opened up in his chest. Everyone there looked through the hole in Cannon's chest to the scenery beyond. C Cannon! N it's. Uh... Aw, Cannon's dead. Whoops. Cannon swamped backwards and was swallowed up into the depths of the well. Everyone, run! The Chester sisters! They've locked on! We can't avoid them! Run! Let at least one of us remain alive! At that time, Klaus and Kiri and Nanjo certainly saw a golden curved wine appear from the well and sew itself through the side of Shannon's head. That's what it sounds like. Shannon! Her head had been pierced. The three had witnessed it perfectly until it had shot out the opposite side, blowing it away. Shannon fell to her knees, blood gushing from both sides of her head and flopped to the ground. Why? They're after us. Run. We'll be killed. R round. Run, run, run. As Nanjo doubled over in shock, stunned by how Shannon had died, the Chiesta sisters did not allow him to escape. A curved wine again appeared from the well and pierced from, from Nanjo's forehead to the back of his head in an instant, sewing through him. Thump. And so Nanjo passed away. Hmm. 
What the? Why? Where's the enemy coming from? We're being sniped. I don't know where from, but they've honed in on us perfectly. They have their eyes That's closed. A Let's escape into the mansion. Block their field of vision. The two dash towards the back door of the mansion. Then, White as Klaus was about to shut the door behind him. A golden curved wine appeared for the fourth time, piercing Klaus from the back of his head to his forehead and smashing that forehead. Eek! Eek! Klaus's body leaned over, fell down into a neat radial pattern with the insides of his head. Nice. Kyrie ran wildly through the hallway, flew into some womb and walked the door. But even so, she wasn't even remotely convinced that this had saved her wife. She would probably die soon. This was apparently one of the guest wombs. At that moment, Kyrie's eyes fell on a phone on a side table. After hanging up the call from Jessica, Badwa had been about to dash out. In that instant, the phone rang again. Hmm. Hello? Huh? Kyrie? Yes, Battler. I got lucky. I managed to escape the dungeon somehow. I really did have luck on my side. W where are you? Is everyone okay? Over here, it looks like Jessica and George are... Listen... I probably won't be alive for long. At that time, right after she thought the keyhole of the locked door might have grown gold, a gold curved wine drawing a helix. No, a golden sewing thread penetrated in from there at an incredible speed and bored a hole into the floor by Kyrie's feet. <gasps> no! Oh, that's unusual. The enemy who sniped the other four one after another with extraordinary skill apparently Wee Wee does have trouble shooting me. Shooting me between the eyes with a single shot while I'm holed up in this room. But the next strike will probably hit. At this point, Kyrie finally remembered the first massive killing in the dining hall. That's right. This is what killed Rudolph and the rest. All six of them. Listen, Battler. I'm going to tell you everything exactly as I saw it. I'm sure you'll think there's something wrong with my head. Yes, it's okay for you to think that. Even I still haven't sorted out what it was I saw. Today, after you all returned to the guest house, the family conference began in the dining hall, and I'll tell you everything that happened next. Listen until the end without butting in. The call might be suddenly cut off part way through. If it does, at that time, I'll be dead. Kyrie. Then, Kyrie spoke about Kinzo doing something. Okay, appearing. So Kinzo appeared. Do you want me to read the rest of it? Yeah, it, when right. it, it skipped right. that Ken whole thing. Okay, for me. Kenzo appearing and the family conference starting. About the six people. About how. About the Wait. six. Pe about the six being killed and the five of them being confirmed confined. Holy shit! Did it really skip over that much? Yeah. Jesus. About how she had escaped somehow and ran away to where she was now and how everyone had finally been ki finally been killed. It was all spoken dispassionately, with no dramatization, just as she'd seen it. She even spoke about how everyone except her had been killed, and how she had observed the moments of all their deaths, and how even now someone was trying to kill her. Actually, even while we've been talking, I've been attacked three times. Something like a strange gold thread keeps flying in through the keyhole, spinning around and aiming for me. First it was by my feet, next it was close to my shoulders. Just now it grazed my ear. Its aim is getting more and more accurate. Looks like it'll go right between my eyes pretty soon. R run, Kyrie! Run away! Where to? I've run this far, shut myself into a room and even locked the door, right? Now that I'm still being pursued, just where should I hide? Hey. Kyrie... son. Hey, Badler, are Jessica and George still alive? What? Not long ago, I got a phone call from Jessica. It kind of sounded like they were done for. Thought so. Yeah, when we were being killed one after another, I had a kind of premonition. 
I thought that perhaps the second twilight had been finished in the ceremony of killing thirteen people before our twilights had been reached. In short, when I die, that's thirteen people. This way, the ceremony is complete. The golden witch Beatrice will resurrect. Hmm. I wonder what in the world will happen. On this island filled with demons and witches and swarming with goat monsters. I wonder just what will happen when even the leader of them all, the Golden Witch, appears. By now, I don't have a clue what's going on anymore. Kiwi's voice had completely given up on her own wife. Because Batwa understood that, he couldn't stop the tears. There's just one thing I can advise you on. What? If a demon or a witch does appear in front of you... Yeah? There's no need whatsoever to doubt whether it's real or not. Understand that it is what it seems to be. You might think there must be some trick, or that there's some true nature hidden behind it. If you have the time to think of something like that, it'd be much more constructive to plan out how not to damage the mood of whatever you're facing. Mm. Even mistakenly, you must not say, in that case, try showing me magic, because to prove that, they'll probably use an even crueler way than before to show you. I can't believe it. Even if I hear something like that coming from your mouth, I can't believe it. I understand. I understand why you can't believe. So that's why I can give this advice. Believe. What, you're telling me to believe in Beatrice and demons and witches and monsters? Even after being shown things not of this world so clearly, I think we still weren't able to believe any of it. I'm still like that now. The true form of this thing that keeps attacking me, trying to shoot through my forehead, is something I don't understand, and I can't believe it. So, I want you alone to believe, to understand, to accept the existence of what we couldn't accept. If you do that for me, our deaths won't be wasted. It'll also have been worth it for me to make this phone call. Ah... Uh, Kyrie? I'm still okay. It scratched me, but it missed again. It looks like... I probably won't get another chance. Thank you. And goodbye, Battler. I treated you coldly sometimes because you were a Sumu son. Forgive me for those days. What do you mean, forgive you? Right now, you're a mother to me, Kiri. Uh, this is probably Battler, yeah? Yeah. I felt as though I'd heard an incredible sound at the other end of the receiver. Then a noisy clacking sound, as though the receiver had fallen to the floor. Kyrie! Kyrie! Uh... Kyrie. Kyrie. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, you do it. I was just waiting for you to do it, but then you didn't say anything. Okay. <laughs> Kyrie did not answer the phone again. Alright, I think I'm starting to understand what the fuck this shit's all about. Mm. Especially with the goats and, like, searching for something. That seems to me like it was all chaotic and it didn't really even make sense. That seems to me to be searching for, uh, the... Like, searching for something that will help you understand. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, like a person that will help you understand. Or an archetype that will help you understand. Or like... Yeah, something like that. But yeah. Every, things are starting to click. I understand. I'm, I've am i read Jung. Hopefully Jung can help me out in this situation. Because I think... I'm starting to understand psychology now. And it's fucking awesome. Yeah. Well, are you ready to go to the next one? Uh, I'm ready to stop recording. And go to the next one? Nah, I want to make some food because I'm hungry. Oh, yeah, but then after that... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, see okay. you all later. Goodbye.